Hey, this is how we do it. This is how we do it. I'm loading up this long K. Today might be the day I hear them walkie-talkies tripping in that hallway. With my from exhibition, another intelligent black male soon to die from a corrupt system. They exterminate your niggas. Young or innocent, ethnic cleansing, give you parole after your sentence. Then we get the fact that you block and tell you not to be ignorant when you overreact. It's a chain reaction. Slavery change, change, change from happening. King, where's your passion? Talent might be magic. Only if you score a assist and win. Better get your practice, no surrender. No retreats. I'm coming to get what's rightfully mine. Where's my peace or peace of mind? Will I be on PCP or peacing up on the line? Peacing out with this peace out until this judge gives me a piece of time. They're trying to give us mandatory age tests so they can trip us or shoot us up with age yes. We victims can't talk on that phone no more because they listen it. Can't trust them cars. Arms start censoring. Used to talk Skype, but they surveillance in the internet. And when this comes out, they just go and censor it and tell you that it's for your own benefits. Obama had five years of office. Ain't nothing changed yet. You can continue to vote. That won't change shit. No justice, no peace. That's the only way we'll change this. Team is demonic, we're fulfilling and secret, they can't get power and up a power trip. And that's knowledge, kids. Hope you devour it. <sighs> Herbalist Dr. Sebi has cured himself and others of addiction, obesity, and depression. But when he claimed to cure AIDS, he found himself arguing in his own defense before the New York Supreme Court, a case he won. He joins us now to talk about the case, his life, and his incredible work. Thank Correct. you so much for joining us. We want to find out today, we want to know everything about you today. Okay? Now. I've got viewers out there who I'm going to bet some struggle with something that I've struggled with all my life. This handsome face right here is always a whole lot cuter when it's 40 pounds less on. So we could start anywhere. Weight loss, age, cancer, whatever it might be. But if I want to lose and some of my beloved viewers want to lose weight in a healthy manner, but in a fast manner. What should we do first? Well, in answer to your question, I have been struggling with weight since 1964. I was 291 pounds. Now, I only weigh 120, and I'm 6'2". I wanted to know what it would be like to be on the other side of being big. And I want to see the benefits of it because I've been told that there is such thing as the standard weight per height measure. Yeah. But we cannot live by those measures. They're 6'2 and 120. That's all I weigh, 120 pounds. And trust me, I haven't felt this good in my whole entire life. What I did in the last six months, approximately, Eight months ago, I stopped eating for six to four days. But I made a mistake. I made a mistake because I had a speech to do in Philadelphia. And by not eating for those six to four days, I was going for 90 days. But I remembered I had a speech to do in Philadelphia. So when I went to do the speech, I fainted. I had to faint because I was talking too long and I was not eating for 64 days. Yeah. What, what I've done was to discontinue anything that had glucose. Glucose is the underlying enemy. Whenever you indulge in glucose, it would be difficult to lose fat. Mm -hmm. I live in Honduras, yes. okay, and California. In Honduras, I discovered a plant known as Cusca. Okay. Cusca is a plant that the Maya used to use. And they used another one known as the Teosinte. Okay. I eat those plants. Those plants does not have starch or glucose. Uh -huh. You will look at your body losing weight and you're going to get frightened. You use the word frightened. I've been afraid, I've been scared since I heard you say that you gave up food for 64 days. 
What did you do during that 64 day period of time that sustained you, that gave you enough energy to just even get up out of the bed? When I was in the village of Usha in Honduras, we have thermal waters there. We have a thermal water there that has a pH of 9.8. A pH of 9.8, meaning that this substance has a high level of oxygen. And it is oxygen that the body needs, not rice or beans or a piece of meat. It needs oxygen. That is the fuel of the body. So I drink the water and I would drink, eat that kuska. This is a plant that I just discovered lately that the Maya used to eat. Kuska is delicious. It tastes like cucumber. Uh -huh. So I ate that, the kuska plant, I drink the water, and that was it. And did you have like a, what would be your normal kind of everyday routine? Why you went that long without water? I, I hear you say you were coming to Philadelphia to, to do a speech. To speak. So you were traveling and, and, and I mean, you just weren't, you, it's not like you were bedridden, you were active. No, I wasn't bedridden. Mm -hmm. I wasn't bedridden at all. I was working in the village because I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of work to do in the village, building these huts and directing certain programs, the organic electric agriculture program that I have going. So I was busy. You'd be surprised what water does. You see, water, I learned the uses of water in Ecuador. The people built Cabamba. They died at 78% water, 22% solid. Because the body doesn't need that solid food. It needs fuel, and the fuel comes oxygen and water. Let me ask you, you said the pH. Yes. In your village, where the thermal water is, yes. is 9.8. 9.8. And that is compared to what would be in the American water system. Here. Well, 9.8 is a very high level pH. It's hydrogen ion concentration. A high level pH ensure that you have the amount of oxygen that the body needs, also the minerals. You find that in the thermal waters. In America, there is water here because there was Trinity. Trinity water was thermal and it was 9.8. Uh -huh. Yes, you find it in America also. So let me ask you, um, you, so in, in essence, aside from the plant and the water, you fasted from all other kinds of solid, oh, yes. solid food. Oh yes. Okay, how long ago was that? That was only about eight months ago. Uh huh. And you have a, a a baby on the way now. Yeah. She's pregnant. Okay. You're again. You're 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 82 years old, and I'm and I'm putting some emphasis on this because it is highly unusual. Um, do you maintain that it shouldn't be so unusual, or that? It's not something so extraordinary about you that other men ought to be able to uh, produce? Uh, men could do it. Other men could do it. Any man could do it. What I did was to depart from the usual diet that most men indulge in, change, changing the diet. Because remember, I was impotent. I was impotent at 30. How was it that I could have been impotent at 30 and I'm making babies in my 80s? A whole lot of viewers out there want to know. Sure. But you see what happened, the information that I got in 1964, many brothers and sisters may not have received that message yet. And that message is what? That message came from a Mexican. The message was showing Gene food consistency, meaning your cellular predisposition determines what you should eat. Uh -huh. So when I went to Mexico, I had already traveled to Russia. I was in St. Petersburg. I was in London. I've been to Spain. I've been to many places in Africa. I was asthmatic. I was impotent. I had diabetes. I was in fact crazy. 
I was placed in an insane asylum in New Jersey in 1961. Schizophrenia and paranoia. So I'm schizophrenic, paranoia, I'm impotent, I'm diabetic, I'm asthmatic from birth. So I go to Mexico. Yeah. And the man asks me, where are you from? I say, I am from Honduras. Yeah. He said, we cannot talk. I said, why? Because black folks doesn't come from Honduras. Yeah. Okay. Maya come from Honduras. Maya and Paya and Lenka. So where are you from? Oh, I'm from Africa. Now we're talking. Now because you are from Africa, do you believe that God was drunk when he put black people in Africa? I said, no. Well, do you believe that he put a diet there for you? He said, sure. And what's the diet? Rice and beans and potatoes and yams and cows and hogs and lamb. He said, not so. That's not the diet of an African. What is the diet of an African? He said, the same as the Toltec and the Almec. All that which is native. But I didn't know these things mm -hmm. because I was a Muslim. Okay. You know, I was in Islam. I love Islam. Yeah. Islam gave me a whole lot of good things. I mean, I met Elijah Muhammad. Okay. I met the messenger talking to him like I'm talking to you. Okay. But the messenger's information at the time needed a little bit more help. So he told me that I could not eat meat any longer, no lamb. I could not drink any milk. And I abstained from all these things. And here I am now at 82. I'm happier than I've ever been in my life. Okay. In the opening of this show, I talked about you having worked with Michael Jackson. Yes. Can you tell us about how that came about and what kind of work you did with him? I was home a Sunday afternoon in Los Angeles on uh, La Cienega. Somebody threw a rock at my window. When I looked outside, it was Randy. Well, I had known Randy over the years, Randy Jackson, yes. Michael Jackson's brother. Mm -hmm. So he came upstairs. What's it? My brother want to see you. I said, who? Michael. Michael? Michael want to see me? <laughs> I'm the least of the individual that people want to see. I'm at the bottom of the totem pole. I went to see him. And he said he was in agreement with me traveling with him. And I told him that I would be able to help him. He couldn't sleep. He was in a very bad emotional state. What what time frame? What time period was this? Do you remember? Uh, 2004. Okay. I was with him from <clears throat> February until September 2004. At the ending of September, I told him, I said, you know, you're singing, you feel good, you're looking good. I'm leaving. He said, don't leave me. I said, why? I said, I want you by my side, but I have a business to build. But I love Michael. Michael, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful brother. What did you do for him? What I did for him was this. I gave Michael an intracellular chelation. An intracellular chelation means that I'm going to clean every cell that makes up every organ that totals his biological structure. Because he was full of a whole lot of drugs, you know, the uh, pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah. Couldn't sleep. Yeah. His nerve was shattered. So I began treating him. Yeah. And at the ending of the period, he was doing good and I left. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's deal with this because there might be some folks out there that are looking in here and they're saying, well, how did you learn to do these things? One and I would I would say and I think we have something that we'll end up showing on the screen here um, regarding in 1979 I think it was uh, you were uh, uh, you were charged in New York City with practicing medicine without a license you were ultimately 
charged, indicted, and taken before the New York Supreme Court. And I would advise my viewers who might be questioning your authenticity that you won that case. Now, what were the, so the charge was practicing medicine without a license and claiming that you had a remedy to cure AIDS, cancer, and diabetes. So the question is, how did you win that case against what some people say are the toughest prosecutors in the land? Well, it was 19, it was 1987. 87, not 79, 87. The 10th of February. Okay. My mother knew they were coming. When I told my mama that I had cured my 13 AIDS patient, she said, they're gonna get you. They're gonna get you. So let me stop you there. You said I cured my 13 AIDS patients. Yeah. So you had 13 patients yeah. who had AIDS. Yeah. And then you say cured. you cured them. Sure. Keep talking. So my mother said, they're gonna get you. I said, but mom, why are they gonna get me? Because you must remember that you live in a society that supports a certain philosophy and a certain system. You be the color that you are, black, and then you're going against the grain, they're gonna get you. So, when I'm in my office on February the 10th, here come the detectives. You are charged with practicing medicine without a license, selling product not approved by the FDA, and claiming to cure AIDS and other diseases. Mm -hmm. I said, yes. Well, you are making a fraudulent claim. I asked the detective, how do you know that? Because because you were advertising in newspapers. Of course, I advertised in the Village Voice, the Amsterdam News, and the New York Post. And you were telling people in your through your advertising that you can cure AIDS, sickle cell, lupus, herpes, blindness, diabetes, paralysis, and others. Uh -huh. Okay, so they come knocking on the door and, and so it knocked on my door and took me to jail. But the funny thing about it, I was happy. I was very, very, extremely happy. When everybody in my office was crying, I was happy because my mama told me they were coming. And I knew that I had sufficient evidence to prove my position. Not only scientifically, empirically, historically, and whatever way they would like desire. So while I was in jail, I'm saying, I wonder what defense they would have against me. Yeah. I would like to know. <clears throat> but I didn't blame the Attorney General, Mr. Robert Abrams, mm -hmm. because why should he accept from me the statement that I cure AIDS and sickle cell yeah. and blindness yeah. when no one else has ever made those claims? The man had a right to arrest me, but he was making a mistake. So I'm sitting in jail. And I'm happy. When I got out of jail and I began to, when I went in front of the judge, I asked three questions. And they were? They were, Your Honor. You defended yourself. Of course I did. Your Honor, is it a fact that the Holy Bible teaches that the herbs are for the healing of the nation? She said yes. Is it a fact that science shows that the human body is carbon-based and to complement a carbon-based body, you must have a carbon-based substance to complement it because the body only accepts the substance through the process of chemical affinity. Chemical affinity is important. It's an electrical transport. Chemical affinity. The body could only accept what it is made of, not something new or alien to it. Last question. Your Honor, is it a fact that the father of medicine, Mr. Hippocrates, the man that established the principle of medical science today, cured every disease known to man? 
Did he use herbs or chemicals? She said, herbs. I said, thank you very much. I rest my case. Okay, go ahead. So I understood that the state were unprepared to defend itself. Mm -hmm. They were unprepared because in the past there was 2,781 cases that came before the Supreme Court of law. I won. Not only did I prove scientifically, but I had these diagnostic sheets, and I do have them today. And I don't diagnose she didn't come from me. They came from their school, their American accredited, accredited medical accredited school. Were, did I read it correctly, where there was some requirement for you to actually bring patients, a, a patient in the court from each of those maladies, and that you brought multiple patients in court one testified themselves and that you had medical medical records, one showing that they were victims of the disease and then showing that it had been cured by one doctor and then a second doctor verifying what the first doctor did. Yes, we have to remember this, that whenever you make a statement that goes against the grain, you better be prepared. You better be prepared. The judge said that I had to bring one of every patient that I had killed, and there was one that said others. The other was a man that came from Italy. He was paralyzed. But I took, I was supposed to take nine. I took 77. You took 77 patients in court with you? That's correct. But I knew that my brain was not the same as your brain or any other brain, right? We're unique. So when I make a statement, they're going to take my statement and pit it against philosophy. It doesn't fit. I represent an entity that isn't philosophical. And that entity is? Well, it's an African one. I'm an African. And we have to remember that. You see, we think that we could take a philosophy out of Europe or China and inculcate that into the African brain. It does not resonate. It cannot resonate. You cannot be yourself when you've been adulterated. Being that I am an African, I'm going to look at things the African way. And the African way seems to reduce things the least common denominator. And guess what I found? That there's only one disease. Not two, not three, one. When I opened my big black mouth and told the judge that, they, oh my God. What did you say? I said, Your Honor, there's only one disease. And what is Could that? you substantiate that? Oh, okay. Of course, I'm not going to just deploy a bunch of empty words. I represent a country, I represent a people, I represent a race, and I represent myself. I'm not going to undermine myself. There's only one disease. The judge said, what is it? I said, you already know. She said, try me. It was a woman, Ann Feldman. I said, Rano, when someone has sinusitis, what is obstructing the nasal passage? She said, mucus. And when another has bronchitis, what is obstructing the bronchial tubes? She said, mucus. And when another has pneumonia, what's covering the cells of the, of the lungs? She said, mucus. Dr. Victor Herbert, who is defending the state of New York, jumped up and said, what about AIDS? You and your one disease theory? I said, Rana, this doctor saying that I believe in a theory. I am the last individual on earth that could believe in a theory. I do not lend myself to theories of philosophy. 
either I know or I don't know. He's talking about theories. You're talking about the real deal. I'm talking about reality, not theories, not philosophy. So please share with this. Uh, so she said, and what about AIDS? Well, he asked about what about AIDS. He want to know where the mucus. I said, Rana, have you been to an AIDS ward? She said, yes. I said, what is it that the AIDS spits up every five minutes? She said, mucus. Where is the mucus? It's in the skin, it's in the blood, and the lymphatic system that makes up the immunological system. That is where you find the mucus, Mr. Victor Herbert. How can you agree with, how can you disagree with truth? You see, what happened, I didn't go to school. I have never been to school. I have never attended any school, kindergarten, grade school, high school, or anything. But I had parents that kept me anchored to the African way, not to the Chinese way, not to the European way, not to the Japanese way. I am an African. Were, were, your, were your patients all of color? No, no. I have patients that are white. I have more white patients than I have black. Okay, so this scourge that, you know, has just run rampant, you know, through the world, AIDS. Can you walk us through as much as you can a step-by-step -step process where you have a patient that has AIDS and you do XYZ or ABC and then the patient no longer has AIDS. Can you walk us through that? Of course. When the, when the, the first patient was a brother in Boston named Michael White and a sister, she's from DC. Her mm -hmm. name is, oh boy, I forgot her name right now. Okay. But she told me, she said, Dr. Sevi, my brother-in-law brother has AIDS in Boston. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? I said, well, I'm going to send him the compound. The compound that I made were made to cleanse the cells. They come in the category of phosphates, carbonates, iodides, and bromides. Now we are entering the science of biochemistry. These are food and vitalizers. I remove from the man's diet lactose, uric acid, and carbonic acid, milk, starches, and meat. By removing these things from his diet and then cleansing his cells, he begins to see recovering 24 hours. And so it went. They kicked him out of the hospital two weeks later. Memorial Hospital in Boston, Dr. Bonanno. Mm -hmm. Then there was a young man in D.C., Zelma Peterson is her name. Zelma Peterson. Yeah. She was the one that introduced me to my second AIDS patient, and from then it was all the way, all the way alive. Okay. Now, you have documented. I got proof now. You got, you have proof. Ah, books with the documents in it, Di Di diagnostic sheets. Yeah. And the medical, the, the medical world still puts out that you are a quack, crazy man, you're not credentialed, and that you run scams on people. But you have documented proof of healing people. Now, I know that you have a, a you reference a compound in Honduras. You also operate out of a, 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 a you operate out of Los, Los Angeles. Los Angeles also. So when you get a patient now, do you if you if you have a DC patient, does that DC patient need to go to LA or Honduras? Or? No, no. We treat them. In fact, we send a thousand packages a day throughout the world right now. Israel, Hong Kong, China, Russia. We have people that live not from Russia. We have people from all over the world. We send packages all over the world. You don't have to even be in Honduras. But it is good to go to Honduras because 
the thermal waters of there yeah. and they accelerate the process of healing once you immerse your body in it and you drink it. You speak of Honduras. No, about the medical science saying that I'm a quad. Yeah. I do not blame medical science for making that statement because my race has never done anything on that level of endeavor to express itself able to cure diseases on that level in, in other words so sure i'm a quack but i don't care what they say yeah. what i was concerned with not medical science because i know that they're the one that is violating i am not the violator hippocrates did not establish the school of medicine by using chemicals because the chemicals cannot assimilate a chemical cannot assimilate with the human body. An herb can because they are electrical. Okay. Herbs are electrical. And we have yet to understand that. I was concerned with the black leadership of America, not medical science. When I had cured these people of sickle cell and lupus and herpes and blindness, I was happy. I said, now I, I could go to all the leaders. I could go to Minister Fayakon. I could go to Jesse Jackson. I could go to Art Sharpton. I could go to Oprah Winfrey. But what I found out, I was mistaken. I was wrong. They are not interested in the healing of any black people. That's an explosive claim. That is not an explosive statement. That is a reality. There isn't a black leader in America that is interested in the health of the black race. You say that because they refuse to interact with you? They are not in the position to respond. If they were, my first case of AIDS was cured in 1984. And since then, we've been curing people of lupus and herpes and cancer and blindness. Not one black leader ever said, well, let us have the brother. <laughs> that you just mentioned what some people in hushed tones refer to as the C word, cancer. I have friends right now that have been victimized by that scourge of a disease. One, no, two, two fairly close to me who have been going through chemotherapy we just recently had, we just recently had the Lieutenant Governor from the state of Maryland. And the governor of Maryland is, has cancer. And he's been going through chemotherapy treatments. And he talked about how devastating those treatments were. So you obviously don't treat with chemo. Why is it wrong for a, oh, is it wrong for a cancer patient to be treated with chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is an approach that destroys cells. Chemotherapy doesn't distinguish between good cells and bad cells. Mm -hmm. It destroys cells. It's an acid approach. What kind of approach? Acid. Oh, acid approach, okay. My approach is an intracellular cleansing. What causes disease in the first place? an acid condition. Well, let us sweep it out. Let us find the plants that are consistent with cleansing. You see, we just begin to wake up. We just begin to realize that we are way in a deep deficit. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean that we have never spent time in analyzing or even trying to understand the difference in our genetic predisposition. We have never understood the science of biochemistry. All of the folks that have come to us, that have came to us, they came to us with history, a bunch of history, a lot of religion, a lot of philosophy, but none of them came with a food that would help me to live 
as hard as I possibly can. Look carefully. We're not going to make excuses no more. Because if you, we continue to make excuses, we're going to go deeper into the deficit. Just recently, a report came out that the Christian diet needs to be examined, re-examined. Because in the Christian diet, you have people eating hog, potatoes, rice and beans. But if we take this substance to a biochemist, he's not going to find any food in any of these substances. So why do we eat this thing? Then we get sick. I always use that black woman in the jungle. For some reason, she keeps showing up. This black woman in the jungle keeps showing up as setting the standards and raising the bar. Tell Why? Me, tell, tell me what you refer to when you say this black woman in the jungle. Oh, I mean, this woman was the woman that set the standard. This woman didn't die because of disease. She didn't have any hospitals in the jungle. She didn't have any doctors. She didn't have any medicine. That's why Hippocrates said that your medicine should be your food or your food should be your medicine because the African people didn't have a doctor. They didn't need them because they didn't have any of the substance that would violate the biology of the individual. So how long did they live? Do you and I know how long those Africans lived in the forest of Africa before the chemical people came? Furthermore, my mama was naked. She was natural. Because to say that my mama was naked in the forest is to say that God made clothes. You, I mentioned Michael Jackson. You talked about your experience with him. I remember very interesting profile that was done by, uh, by uh, CBS in an interview with Lisa Left Eye Lopez, who we also mentioned at the top of the show. Uh, can you tell us what your experience was with her? Because Lisa. She, she said, we have the footage, that she was committing Committed to spreading the word of Dr. Zay. What did you do with her and for her? I don't know why Lisa would say that she was spreading the word of Dr. Zay because she healed Dr. Zay. She healed you? That's right. This young lady came to me because she needed help, right? Yeah. Her eyes were blinking really fast and she had a little thing that she was suffering with that she wanted to get rid of and she got rid of them and uh, one day she said to me you know it was 4 o'clock in the morning she's in a 21 days fast no sorry 42 days fast Lisa came in the hut where I was living with these two cups of Seymour Sea moss is known as Chondros Crypsis. I had her drinking sea moss. She said, you know, you have helped me, but you need healing. And she was right. I was in a state of disarray, and I didn't know it. It took a woman to show me that. And how, Lisa was the one that showed me that. And, and how, what do you mean that you, you were in a state of disarray? Well, at the time, I was involved with three different wives. I had three wives then, Matum, Annette, and Ma'a. And my life was not as stable because I had other women pregnant. You know, a young girl, 19 years old, was pregnant. Outside of those three? Yeah, outside of those three wives. Her name was Fanny. She had my little girl you know, that run the village named Sama. She's 20. So Lisa said to me that I needed help. And you know, I didn't realize how much help I needed until Lisa told me that that morning. And I, she was right. What was the kind of help you needed? I was, I was, 
take emotionally out of it. I mean, I was out of it. And were you finding, did you, did you realize that you were finding temporary security, affection, or love through the act of these other women? Uh, is, is that what it was? Love. No, no. Love is something that I never depended on from a woman. In fact, I don't even like it. You see, look, I, look, listen carefully. I am. The thing that moves Sebi is that object on the horizon that always keeps showing up. Every, every moment. Not the love of woman, of a woman. And this was given to me by my mother. My mother said, look, when you were born into the world, you didn't born with a twin, okay? So you remember this, that the love that's gonna secure you through life is the love that you offer yourself, not the love of a woman. That could come and go. I've been married four times. I came home and found my wife in bed with another man. I didn't even feel bad. I feel good. My grandfather always said, get another quick. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, it's beautiful. Look, these are the things that we need to cultivate, not the dependency of another. Why should you be dependent on me to love on yourself? That love that you have for you, that love would never die. But if you depend on me, why would you want to do that? I mean, why would I even want the love of a woman when one day she tells me, well, I don't like you no more, but that's fine. Keep on stepping. But my friend John, he didn't do that. He killed himself. Miguel Angel Cruz on the ship. I was a merchant seaman. He killed himself. He yeah. jumped over the side of the over ship. Over that thing called love. So your love, yeah. this word love, we need to re-examine that. I love women. Every woman I've been with, I love now, but I do not depend on their love. You ask about the young lady with us, she says she loved me. She's 25, ask her. I made him too. After pulling me jumping for joy. Not so. My eyes is on the prize, which is Africa. I don't believe that I would ever feel as comfortable as I would like to feel if I do not accomplish the goal that I'm pursuing. And it is. That type is. in Africa yeah. to get out of this. And, and I understand that you've had some disappointment and frustration in dealing with African governments and African leaders that after you have presented your body of work and these different people that you have healed, and Africa, many countries in Africa being so desperately in need of a way to address, just to start and stop with AIDS. But for the most part, they've rejected your approach. Of course, and they were right to reject me. Not only Africa, I quit my job as an engineer to go to Dominica. I went to Dominica and, oh, I was happy. Beautiful island, beautiful people. And people were cured of blindness, diabetes, and a whole lot of other stuff. You said people were cured. You, you helped? Yes, while I was there. And Miss Mary Eugenia Charles said, you got to go. I said, but Miss Charles, I'm doing a service here. Yeah. Look, you got to go. OK, she kicked me out. Me and my crazy self, I went to South Africa under the leadership of Mr. Nelson Mandela. I said, well, I went to the Board of Health. I said, this is what I have done. And I showed them all my documents and diagnostic sheets. AIDS is devastating South Africa. So I thought that because I could do this job, that I would be received with love. That's all I wanted, love, right? Understood. Mandela said, get out of here. 
Nelson Mandela, Wade, another one, Mr. Mugabe from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Oh, I got to Zimbabwe. I took all these boxes of compounds and oh, I was happy. I'm going to do some work in Africa to get out. I said, wow, what's wrong with me? What have I done wrong? But when I look at it carefully, the Africans were right to kick me out. They are right to reject me. Every African country is why, 100% why, why, right. Why do you say that? They are right because the African people are totally unaware that what they are eating is undermining their struggle, undermining their own existence. Africa is eating starch and blood. Starch and blood. Now, let us take that to the laboratory and see if there's food there. No, there's no food. You mentioned earlier that in the, uh, in the Dominican Republic, in a sense, that uh, there were multiple maladies and you had an impact in, in, in curing. And one of them you said blindness. Um, the issue of retinitis pigmentosa, if I'm saying that right, is a certain one form of blindness. What in the world is it? Because on the surface, these positions that you take and the claims that you make are what anybody would say, just simply unbelievable. Of course. However, those who suffer from these maladies want to have a form of hope. So I would ask you to work with me here and walk me through meeting someone who's blind and what you do to and with them to give them sight. You know, when I was kicked out of Dominica, I didn't know where to go. My wife said to me, let's go to St. Croix. I said, but I don't, I don't know anyone in St. Croix. I don't know anything about St. Croix, but I went. When I got to St. Croix, everybody in St. Croix just hated me. They found delight in hating Sebi. Because Sebi was making these statements, and they upset people. I'm broke now. I just quit my job a year ago. And I don't know what to do because the woman kicked me out of Dominica yeah. and I spent all my money trying to buy things and a house. So while in St. Croix, things are looking bad. I got to call my brother to borrow some money. So one day, my wife said to me, I want you to go to the supermarket and buy the food for the children. We got the last $200. When I got to the supermarket, on my way out of the cash register, somebody in line in the back said, Dr. Sebi, I want to thank you for curing my husband. I said, ma'am, I have not cured anyone in St. Croix. No, you cured him in Dominica, he was blind. I said, wait, the only blind man that I have ever treated and cured is in Los Angeles, Mr. Frederick. He said, no, you cured my husband. I said, but how could I cure your husband? He was blind and I didn't know it. Yeah. She said, the policeman that used to come and pick up the remedies and take to my husband didn't tell you what he had. My husband was blind for 11 years. So you're asking me, how could I cure a blind man without seeing him? Well, let me say this. The philosophy of Europe claims that when you're blind, something wrong with your eyes. The philosopher of Africa says, or the understanding of Africa is, not so. When you're blind, something is wrong with your stomach, your intestines. So, you clean the intestines, your eyes begin to clear up. This is a science that is unknown in the world. 
known or unknown? Unknown. Unknown. But it worked for me. The other day, a young man named Mr. G. Beautiful young man. Brilliant young man. Said to me, my sister has lupus. Who cures lupus? Nobody. No cure. Right. Three months later, his, his sister doesn't have lupus anymore. I was happy. I had cured many lupus before, but I wanted this one to work because this is my friend, Mr. G. Mm -hmm. And you know what, uh, uh, Dr. Sebi, I am putting uh, some focus on the issue of this uh, retinitis pigmentosa because I know someone that I am very close to that is 16 years old. A young, young man. Yes. And he, young. he has uh, endured this, and it has uh, it has encroached on him more and more. He's legally blind. He's leading an extraordinarily productive life, but the lights have gone pretty much gone out. And to someone like that, to his parents, for example, what would you say would be something that you do that they should try? Well. Cleaning the body out again, cleansing again. All they have to do is call the office in Los Angeles, and they will send him a package and an eye wash and a stomach wash, and immediately he will see results. Immediately, you see, as you said earlier, it sounds fantastic, but if you're traveling to Africa. Your compass better say 90 degrees, not 270. You're going west. Am I right? So if you travel on the route, you, you better put your compass on the right course. So all these years, we have been following medical science. They say that disease is what? Germ, virus, bacteria. I said no. food that you eat. The food better be consistent with you. Gorilla does not eat polar bear food. But if the gorilla ever make the mistake and put into its mouth the food of the polar bear, he too would find the diseases that we are finding ourselves with. It happened right here in New York in the zoo. Gorillas in the zoo got diabetes, not in the forest. You said uh, someone would call Los Angeles. So what is the process that you have set up to help support and assist people from the United States? This show is airing here in Washington, D.C. We're gonna put it on uh, our site and it's ultimately at the end of the day, it's gonna air all around the world. Um, so they would call- Los Angeles. Los, Los, Los Angeles. And do you still offer uh, the kind of process that Lisa left our Lopez went through that she can come to the village in Honduras. Does that still exist? We have people in the village right now from all over the world. We have a Russian woman there from Vladivostok. We have a man there from Germany. They are inviting me to go to Kenya now. They invite me to go to Nigeria. They invite me to go to many, many, many places. There are many people there. We offer the same service. I'm always open. That folks can come to your place. Of course. And it's a beautiful village. A beautiful village that I built over the years with the help of these wives that are no longer with me. They don't love you no more. You know? <laughs> so let me ask you, we have we have one minute left in this yes, show. Sir. In that one minute, if you could talk to my audience and tell them your parting words to live a healthier life, you would say what? My parting word would be this. Make sure that whenever you put something in your mouth, that that something is gonna compliment you and that it's gonna serve you well. It's gonna support your nervous system because if you doesn't, if you don't, 
you will find yourself stressed. Not only are you going to find reasons to dislike me, you're going to dislike yourself. Glucose is the greatest enemy that you could ever be faced with. <clears throat> Avoid it. Because the one thing you want to do is to love. And that love should begin with you. Once you love you, you love the whole world. It's easy. It's delicious to love everybody and everything. There's no better note to end on. Dr. C.B., thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah.